It's Andre from the High Performance Academy. We're here at World Time Attack 2016, and it's Friday right now. Tim Slade's just gone out in the MCA Hammerhead and smashed the lap record. He's just run a 123.7, which puts him ahead of the rest of the field. I wanted to talk to Murray Coop from MCA Suspension about the changes in the car. So, Murray, first of all, congratulations. It's a pretty good place to yeah, be on no, Friday no, afternoon. Absolutely. Thanks very much. What we'd like to know, I guess, for a start, is what, what's changed in the car from last year? Uh, in two, we recognise two changes that we should do. Uh, the two deficiencies in the car from last year. One was a bit of aero balance. Like the, basically, the car was very strong and, and it's very, been very well designed to start with. We were very happy with how all that turned out. Um, but in driving the car, we needed a little bit more rear stability that we couldn't achieve. So um, we did that with a couple of minor aero changes to the rear wing and to the rear boot lid and at the same time to make up for the drag that that was going to create we thought we better start searching for another little bit of horsepower so we, we did that with a different turbo exhaust system um, a little bit of dyno work we went backwards and forwards with all sorts of different housings and designs um, I was doing mainly the, the test driving before that just feeling response um, and drivability of the things I decided that this was probably better to do a little bit more responsive uh, because I, I, th I think it's important to be able to modulate throttle um, rather than have to plan your day on a corner yeah. and never change your mind. You know, so uh, you, you put yourself, I, I guess, at a, a bit of a disadvantage technically, being that it's rear-wheel drive as well. You're putting all of that power just through two wheels. Yeah, that's right. So, so. You know, to really theoretically to beat a four-wheel drive, you know, everything's got to be aligned pretty well on a good day for us. You know, well today was definitely a good day. Let's talk about the the engine package. So it's still running an SR20 DET, but yep. there's really not a lot of factory SR20 living in that engine bay. It's billet billet block now. Yeah, it's a billet block. Um, it's a billet block with a with a steel crank, you know, with some good rock con rods in it, and and, and very basic sort of you know pistons. Uh, pistons are made here in Australia. That the head on the car is a dead set bog standard VE head. All I've done is just clean up a little bit of porting. I would have, wouldn't have spent more than two hours on the whole head. Um, in fact, the valves and the and the whole thing in that head, um, it's really really bog standard. Standard valves, everything. Um, I gave them a lap in. Some nice valve springs from um, Kelford Cams in New Zealand. And um, and the cam and the camshafts too. Uh, really, that's it. With a with a selection of a, a good you know um, hyper tuned manifold, which flows really well. Uh, exhaust manifold and a turbo. You know, like it's it's nothing really special. It's all about being not wrong rather than being particularly special. You know. And, um, just just going back to when you were, were running the uh, factory alloy block you, you, before you moved to yeah, the the billet. The billet yeah. we, did you actually find a limitation yeah. on, on the stock block? Yeah, it got to the point where, look, you can put the biggest head studs in the world in the damn thing, you know, and as soon as you start leaning on it with some boost pressure, and the 85, like, it's like, it's like hand grenades going off inside all the time, like it's a hell of a lot of bang in there, and, and, and a standard block really just cannot, like, they're probably good for about four or five, 500 horsepower, but after that, you're struggling, you know, to keep water in it, to keep exhaust gas from bypassing and blowing oil out, it just becomes too hard, you know. So essentially you started getting into problems with head gasket integrity, holding the head down? Holding compression and holding head on. And so a billet block, like when we, we, we persevered for a few years with a standard block, and like for a simple out lap, a fast lap and an in lap, my wife would spend all that time wiping up the oil in the rear boot because we had a catch tank for the catch tank for the catch tank, you know, and they used to just blow oil. We would put three litres of oil in it for that. And about 30,000 people told me 50 different ways of fixing it all, of which I probably tried most of them. I put a billet block in the thing and nothing changed. So just the yeah, billet block perfect. gives the, uh, the, str the strength yeah, and integrity yeah, to the yeah, deck surface. Yeah. That went from empty oil tanks every run and putting three litres of oil in to not even touching the cat's tank. That's perfect, that's exactly yeah. what you want on race day. Yeah. So in terms of uh, where you are now power and boost wise, can you let us know what it's running? Yeah, well it breaks, the most we've seen with that motor is 880 on a hub dyno uh, at around about, that's probably close to 40 pounds of boost. So we're running this at about 35, 36 pounds of boost today and, um, uh, and that varies that varies with the gears, like in the lower gears, we run a lot less boost than that, and also on throttle. So you have a, you can select boost by throttle, like as you lean on the throttle, 
it programs more boost into it, and as you pick up the gears, it creams a bit more boost into it too. I'll, to I'll just touch on that a little bit because I know a lot of our viewers won't really understand that, but the turbocharger is so good at making boost that what you find is if you're targeting, say, 35 pound of boost, you can make that 35 pound of boost down to probably 50% throttle, and that gives a very non-linear torque output based on the driver's throttle pedal. So bringing in that... Uh, that throttle based boost control gives the driver more control on the throttle to modulate the throttle and engine power through a corner, correct? Absolutely, yeah. And the last thing you want to do see on a throttle trace on some data is a lift off on throttle on the exit in your corner because that's now the beginning of the end and you need to be able to have a nice smooth uh, application of throttle without getting out of it. And as soon as you start to have to correct, um, basically your, you know, your best lap is potentially over. So the fact that you're running this at 35, 36 pound today, you've already set a, a lap record, everything's going your way, can we expect to see a slightly faster time tomorrow, there's a bit more in it? Yeah, well I'm sort of surprised really we got such a good time today because we've, had, we've been hit with a few throttle, uh, throttle body problems with some um, few electrical gremlins and, and, and getting some errors into the, um, into the computer and it gets a bit confused so it's knocked our power down a bit. So this is our first straight full run. Um, without any hiccups so you know you never know that the car's got nice balance and, and Tim's very happy with the car and uh, and he gives ex excellent feedback uh, you know if we can pick the time to go out with the if we can pick the, the the temperature not too much sun out there um, and 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 there's a little bit of ride height we can play with that we plan to play with and who knows what might happen but we do I, we're not really at the limit of the chassis setup yet um, we've only just got it to the point where it's nicely balanced and it functions very well but there, there is some left, something left yes but it will depend on the atmospheric conditions. Yeah I just want to talk about uh, Tim Slade as well probably uh, more familiar with sitting in a V8 supercar and from a driver's perspective coming from a, a, a V8 supercar making somewhere between six and seven hundred horsepower with very limited aero jumping in in this rocket ship with probably closer to 900 horsepower and a, a high degree of aero. Yeah. How big a learning curve is it for the driver to adapt to the, the speed he can, can, he can still run through the corners? Yeah, yeah. well that's still happening too, you see. He probably only had six or seven fast laps, you know, and, um, in this car. And, um, and, and so it's a credit to him to be able to feel his way as well as he has, you know, and, um, and to adapt and to modulate and the seat of the pants, it comes back to you've got to have very good seat of your pants and natural car control to be able to jump in something, feel your way around in only a few laps with something that's so devastatingly um, so much faster than, a, than a, what he's used to. And um, I guess that's, uh, that's a sign of a professional yeah, driver at the end of the day. Hey look, Murray, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to go over what's been done to the car. I'm uh, really impressed with what you've managed so far today and uh, we wish you all the best for the rest of the weekend. Okay, thanks very much. It's great, thanks.